Indigenous Affairs. Resuming debate, reprise du débat, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan West Kootenay. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to rise here today to speak to Bill C-74, the Budget Implementation Bill for 2018, and to provide comments uh, on the budget in general. And I'll start by simply pointing out that this is another unnecessarily huge bill that is very difficult to digest and properly critique in the time allotted. And it's not just an omnibus bill, it's, it's really an obese bill that is 556 pages long. It amends 44 separate pieces of legislation. And the Liberals decried the practice of the past Conservative government numerous times uh, and ran on an election promise to abolish these bloated bills. And they've not only continued the practice, but they have actually restricted the length of debate on these bills in committee. The NDP, for one thing, is asking that the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act that is within this bill uh, be pulled out and debated separately. This is a very important issue on carbon pricing, and I think it needs a full debate so that Canadians can hear how criti critical it is uh, to our efforts to tackle climate change and meet our Paris targets. There's a lack of clarity in the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Act, and a lot of details have been left out. It really needs to be studied carefully at committee. Carbon pricing is an important tool in our fight against climate change, and we need to ensure that the positive outcomes from such legislation in British Columbia, where carbon emissions have, been, have declined as long as their carbon tax was gradually increasing, are re replicated federally. In such a large bill, it's perhaps not surprising that there are a few parts of this budget that I was very happy to see. And one is the Nature Fund, a $500 million fund that will be matched by non-governmental partners to provide uh, over a billion dollars to protect important ecosystems across the country. Now, before I was elected to, to this place, Mr. Speaker, I sat on the board of the Nature Conservancy of Canada, and I was proud of the accomplishments of that organization in protecting more than a million hectares of land across this country. Many of those projects were at least partly funded by a similar fund created by the former Conservative government. And I don't often have good reason to thank the previous Conservative government, so I'll take this opportunity to do that and hope that this Nature Fund will do even more for conservation efforts across Canada, from the Gary Oak savannas of southern Vancouver Island, the desert grasslands of the Okanagan Valley, the native prairie grasslands, the Carolinian, Carolinian forests of Ontario, and the salt marshes of Atlantic Canada. This fund provides an exciting opportunity to really make a difference, and I can commend the government for creating it, and I wait anxiously to hear the details because uh, they are, seem rather lacking right now. And on the subject of protected areas, I must add a bit of disappointment that came from the Minister of Finance's budget speech, where he clearly said that the national park fees were going to be done away for good. I, I actually applauded that, and I don't really applaud the Minister of Finance very often. But unfortunately, I found out the next day that he had misspoken, and that promise only applied to youth. But I'll say here that free parks would be a brilliant way to get Canadians out of this, out into this country's most beautiful places, and appreciate the natural wonders Canada has to offer. Now, getting back to the good news in this budget, I was also glad to see the significant new funding for fundamental research action that was recommended in the recent Naylor report. I used to work at the University of British Columbia and can speak firsthand to the essential nature of basic research. While applied research is important, the most innovative and game-changing discoveries that science have given us have come from the pure curiosity of scientists, and this funding is most welcome. And we in the NDP were very happy, at least initially, to hear the word pharmacare mentioned in the budget. Canada is the only country in the world with a universal health care that doesn't have universal coverage for prescription drugs. The Parliamentary Budget Officer reported last year that Canada would save a minimum of $4 billion per year if we had a universal pharmacare program. We in the NDP have been championing this for years, and earlier this year, we, or last year, we tabled a motion here asking the government to begin talking with the provinces within the next year about creating a pharmacare system across Canada. The Liberals inexplic inexplicably voted against this eminently reasonable motion, saying it wasn't the right time. Well, Mr. Speaker, now is the time for pharmacare, 
and unfortunately our initial excitement around the mention of pharmacare in the budget was dashed when we realized this would be only another study and a study without a dime of spending attached to it and of course it's not mentioned at all uh, in Bill C-74. The government should act immediately to bring pharmacare to Canada and while they're at it they might want to consider adding teeth, eyes and ears to universal health care and any other body parts we might have forgotten about when we created Medicare. So what's missing from this budget and from this massive bill? Well, despite government claims that this budget was all about equality and gender, there's not one cent in it to tackle the pay equity gap in Canada. Mr. Speaker, I was really encouraged a couple of years ago, very early on in this Parliament, to see the Liberals vote in favour of an NDP motion on pay equity. But two years later, there has been nothing done to really advance pay equity across this country. And for a budget on equality, the government completely missed the boat on narrowing the income gap between the 1% of wealthiest Canadians and the rest of us. Today, the two wealthiest Canadians, two individuals, have as much wealth as 11 million other Canadians. Many CEOs of big Canadian companies receive much of their salary, millions of dollars per year, in stock options, on which they pay only a fraction of the tax that we mortals pay. Fixing this inequity alone could bring $800 million to help balance the budget or fund programs that would make Canadians' lives easier. Offshore tax havens are an even more blatant form of tax avoidance. Following the release of the Paradise Papers, some analysis calculated that Canada is losing between $10 billion and $12 billion, $15 billion per year in lost taxes. The Conference Board of Canada has suggested that the gap between what taxes are owed in Canada and what the government actually collects may be as high as $47 billion. One Canadian mining company has avoided $690 million in Canadian taxes simply because it reports its profits in Luxembourg, where it has one part-time staffer. It's ridiculous and it's shameful, but it's completely legal because the company got written permission for the scam from the Can Canada Revenue Agency. And the government continues to add offshore tax havens to the list available for Canadian companies and individuals. So now you can hide your wealth in Grenada or the Cook Islands if Barbados and the other many countries with very low tax regimes don't suit you. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I'll wrap up this by simply pointing out that there's no new spending uh, in this budget for climate action despite the clear signals that Canada will fail to meet its Paris climate targets. We need bold action, significant investment on this front. So instead of pouring money into Barbados, the Cook Islands or Luxembourg, let's invest those billions into eco-energy retrofits, renewable energy incentives and electrical vehicle in infrastructure to get back on track and make Canada a better place to live for our children and their children. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Whitby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my Honourable colleague for his, uh, his speech. Um, Mr. Speaker, I uh, just heard from the Parliamentary Secretary for the uh, Minister of Revenue uh, talk about the investments that we've made over the, the, the last three budgets in the CRA, and I happened to be uh, in Grenada when we signed the agreement between our two countries to share information around our tax uh, taxes to ensure that we were not we were adequately taxing companies who were who had accounts uh, there, and they were able to share that information with us. So I'm wondering if the the honourable colleague could sort of correct the record on the uh, the relationship that we have with some of these companies to ensure that the, the or sorry the countries to ensure that the companies are sharing the information that we need to crack down on tax evaders the honorable member for south okanagan west kootenai uh, well thank you and i'd like to thank the honorable member for that question um, i'm not uh, an expert on the grenada situation but i i do know that canadians and canadian companies can funnel their profits through these other countries with who have very low tax regimes and just the example I just gave here we have a company who puts 600 and uh, he puts its profits through Luxembourg where it has some part-time consultant staffer and can report that 
uh, profit as being made in Luxembourg, and they're avoiding $690 million in Canadian tax. They do pay $80 million or something to Luxembourg, but they're, Canada is losing $690 million, and that is not some shady thing. It's legal because they went to CRA beforehand and got a signed letter saying that was okay. This is where that has to stop. I don't, I'm not a tax lawyer, I don't know how these things work, but that is wrong, and we have to fix that. And all the talk about how much CRA is working to go after the little fish in Canada, go after small businesses, is, you know, that is really annoying to most Canadians. They want the big fish caught, and they want to see that money stay here in Canada where it can be put to good use. Thank you. Commentaires, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Edmonton Manning. I congratulate uh, the member from uh, Quitby, Colombia, for uh, his speech, and thank you, thanks to him for uh, shedding the light or giving credit where credit belonged to our uh, previous uh, conservative government over some good policies. Uh, the question is: uh, We know that I mean we hear a lot from the government that there's 1.1 billion dollar being given to CRA in order to help CRA to fight uh, tax evasion, and uh, on the other side we hear on the ground across Canada how annoyed being Canadian from CRA is going after the small guy here in Canada. The question to the Honourable Member is, uh, does he believe that the policy and the money that was given to CRA are working to really fight tax evasion or just the rhetoric just to blow some more money into uh, an agency like CRA? The Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Well, Mr. Speaker, thank you. I um, thank the uh, Honourable Member for that question, and I would just follow up on what I was saying previously, that here we have the CRA seems to be intent on going after all the little fish, all regular Canadians, small businesses who, you know, trying to get, you know, $100 here, $1,000 there. These people aren't the real tax avoiders. They're not the real tax cheats. A lot of them are just trying to make a living, trying to build their company, you know, give jobs to Canadians, uh, and the CRA and this government seems intent on making it more difficult. We had the, uh, the small business tax measures that were, you know, floated last summer, in the middle of the summer, they had a short uh, comment period. Canadians just rose up in real anger over that. I heard from so many of the small business owners in my riding, uh, they were, I think, really uh, naturally very irate about this uh, and you know the government after a lot of pushback from the conservatives and the NDP the government has um, moved back on some of these measures but I think this whole attitude of going after the little fish is wrong we should be bring, bringing in strong legislation that helps us fight these uh, offshore tax havens uh, limits the CEO tax, uh, the stock option loopholes that can really, you know, fight the tax cheats in Canada, really bring in a revenue that we need to help Canadians who are struggling uh, in their daily lives. Thank you. Resuming debate, reprise.